Ladies and gentlemen, we're back live from the Grand West Casino and Entertainment World here in Cape Town, South Africa, where this afternoon's Muay Thai action is proudly brought to you by Thai Holics Fight Promotions TFP2, The Recruitment. All bouts have been sanctioned by the South African Muay Thai organization, with the main event and the co-main event sanctioned for the South African national title, and that's courtesy of the World Muay Thai Organization. Look out for our main event, Cochrane versus Deacon, coming up live. We jump into the action, bout number six on this afternoon's card. Pro-Am rules, that's three rounds by three minutes in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner, 22 years of age, standing 1.71 meters tall. He scaled in at 66.1 kilograms with a record of one win and two losses. Fighting out of Viper MMA and the city of Cape Town, please welcome Michael Besadenho. <laughs> Facing Michael Besaden Houghton working out of the red corner, he weighed in at a trim and ready 66.2 kilograms. He fights out of Alundi in KwaZulu Natal and the Domination Gym. Please welcome the returning Simonello and Tom Bella. <laughs>
center. <clears throat> you guys, I want you the to first to bout of, of the Pro-Am segment of this afternoon's card. Okay. This is where it becomes a lot more serious. This is where it okay. seems to, you get the feeling that it's going to get stepped up. Here, kicking us off, Michael Besaidenot versus Sibonello and Tombella. Both guys returning for TFP2. They were both in TFP1. It's Domination Gym versus Viper MMA. Michael, what are you expecting? I'm expecting a knockout in this one. Michael calling it early. Doesn't want to go to distance here. He wants those peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we, we saw both of these fighters last time. And Sintobella looks like incredible. He's a yeah. physical specimen. He's well trained. Okay. And um, he's got cardio to back it up with. So the speed and the power will be there for three rounds. Okay, guys. Of course, well trained. That's Jump. by Crew Walters from Domination Gym. Clinton, that is. And uh, he's bringing down one of the brothers, the other brother who stayed at home this weekend. And Sibonella starts off fast, starts off strong, and comes out smoking at the bell. Yeah, I think importantly for this Aiden Otis is to keep his hands up, watch his defense, not get sloppy, not rushing on too much. We know that uh, Cebu is a strong striker, but Michael, you know, he used game last round as well against Shane. He's got the skill set, he just needs to make sure that he's very technical in this one. Both guys scaled in at 66, but the size difference is remarkable. I mean, you've got a big guy in Sibonello and Tambella. How he gets down to 66, I have no idea, but I have a feeling he's one of those guys who's just in shape all the time since birth. Jump! <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like myself, Devin. Yes, Michael, kind of like yourself, but not much. Round is a shape. <laughs> he also says this is a gift from God. He's fighting as a gift from God, and he's just here to use it. So I guess, you know, when you're that committed to it, your body's always going to be in shape. I think the tricky part for Michael is to, to change styles from fighting somebody technical like Shane to finding somebody powerful like Sintubella. Uh, that's going to be a, quite a different thing to handle. For sure, and we're seeing right from the start, he's working off the back foot, it's working for him so far. He hasn't taken anything too big damage because he's not coming forward, not walking into those big strikes. Well, I'll tell you guys, I mean, Muay Thai is new to me, but I'm quite impressed by the work that uh, Besaidenode is putting up at the moment. I mean, he's doing really nicely close in. He's catching short one, two, short left hook, right hook kind of combinations. I don't think he's being outclassed by any stretch of the imagination. No. Eats a right hand, comes back with a leg kick. Yeah, exactly. He's doing the technical job that he needs to do. Not get too wrapped up. He doesn't want to get this into a brawl. That's where he might find a bit of trouble. So he just needs to be careful that he doesn't get a bit too easy on it, too lax. Exactly. He's got to stay on his bike. He's got to be on red alert at all times, you know. And Tom Bella wants to make this war. He wants to make this a street yard battle. Let's go. But what we're seeing as well from Michael is that he's got that pinpoint. He's hitting, he's hitting his target. He's landing his strikes, which is great. You know, as Cebu's walking in, he's the one actually walking into the strikes at the moment. Yeah, you're right. He's got, a, he's got actually really nice boxing, but boxing is not enough to win a Muay Thai fight. You have to bring up all the tools. He's staying small, he's keeping his target small, you know, he's crouching down, he's making Ntombelo bend down to try and throw those shots. I would have thought a bigger leg attack would have been coming from Ntombelo because he has got the advantage of those longer levers. Yeah, it's also because I think what's happening to him is he's walking into these punches, so he's looking for that now as well. He wants to return in, in kind. Is it fair enough to say that Michael Besaidenhout is dragging Ntombelo into a punching battle here when it doesn't necessarily need to be that? Definitely. And we're also seeing him miss. And when you miss, you want to go get that point back. And that's why he's uh, keeping it up top, trying to throw big shots. Tombella's mouth is open at the end of round one. That's a tough one to score, eh? I'm giving it to Michael first round. I always thought the same thing. Now, this must be said, when Emily called the knockout yeah. when the fight was beginning, but now it's a different story. We had a very composed round one, thanks to Besaid. No, you know, he made it a difficult, he made himself a difficult target for Sibonella to get down onto. Sibonella kind of abandoned his strengths, which is his length, possibly his leg attacks. Mike, first round given to Besaid. No. First round given to Besaid. No, I think um, Tabella was just maybe a little bit lax in terms of the approach. Maybe he's taking Michael lightly. Um, I think, I think he's going to have the cardio to go three rounds where Michael looks like he's fading a little bit. He had his best round so far. Maybe, maybe that's the best he's got. Um, he's not varying his tack enough. And Tubella landed a nice knee in the middle of the round there. I think he, if he starts to bring the legs into it, the knees, the elbows, he might change the, the tide of this fight. Seconds out. 
almost as if to say, you know, okay, he might not be bringing all the variety, all the tools, but the tools that he has, he's working immaculately with. Okay. And here he gets up, round number two. We're about to get going. Tombella to versus Poseidon Hoats. I think what we might okay. see from, from Michael here is maybe a little bit of clinch work. You know, you can't stay on the back foot the whole time. Eventually, with the pressure that's coming, you might get put into a corner and then you're going to eat some strikes. He is eating a few big shots as we go. So he needs to keep his hands up, look for a clinch, maybe sneak in an elbow. You, you know, Sabu's putting all the pressure on. And as I said, that Michael's the one coming forward. He Michael's says, the one coming forward and landing that kick to the ribs of Ntombella. Maybe he's given Sabu something to think about, you know. He also needs to realize now that this is a chess match. You're not going to be just throwing all your tools and landing every time. Big right hand from Inton Bela, but Darius, uh, sorry. But then came Oaks. back with the right one of himself. Exactly. He didn't take a step back. He didn't get shook. He carried on. Yeah, it's great to see that he's not, he's not as pensive anymore, you know. Even though he is working off the back foot, he knows he's, got, he's landing some clean strikes, landing some big shots, and he's making Ntombele miss. Now here's the thing. Oh, and he gets put on the seat of his pants. Big catch of the kick. Right hand delivered. I don't think it was a clean shot. It was a co like combination of the trip and a punch. And they were moving backwards. Uh, that's, yeah. Depends how the judges see that. All things conspired to put him on the back of his pants and... Now he gets up, he's looking composed, he's carrying on, you know, he goes back to work. Sabu also needs to be careful dropping his hands, looking for those catches of the kicks. You know, if Michael's clever here, he can start doing a few feints, maybe throwing the kick high. Now here's the thing, this is TFP2, we've already had one where we've got video footage. Both of these guys have had plenty of time to look at each other in camp, especially that last fight that they had at TFP1. Do you think that this is what we're seeing here? The side notes seemingly scouting what Ntombele was good at in the last time? Yeah, it's almost certainly the case that he knows that Sabu is a big striker. He knows he needs to avoid those shots. And I think we'll be seeing that early on now. Also, I think, you know, Ntombele didn't learn much from his last fight. He had quite an easy fight. Whereas Poseidon had a diff difficult fight against Shane. So he would have come out a little bit more experienced, a little bit more wise. But the power of Ntombele now is starting to show. Yeah, the class of Ntombele also starting to show. He seems to be timing those leg sweeps beautifully. He's seeing them coming a mile away. The opportunities are always there. And I think that's also a defensive issue for Michael. He doesn't really know how to get out of that. Every time he gets caught, he's just hopping on the back foot and getting pressured into a trip. What he needs to do is either pull his foot back, deep, spin out of it, find a way to not be put on his seat again. You're just seeing the power come through now. And, you know, like you said, he's, he's not doing anything to defend those, those, those catches. He's just accepting the, the, the trip. He's not fighting out of it at all. This fight so far has been the tale of two rounds. The Satan Hope was very much dictating how the fight was going in the first round. Now the physicality has come out, the size difference has come out, and you're seeing Tombella starting to take over in round number two. Satan has still done well to land his strikes as he's going, moving backwards, but yeah, it always comes down again to who looks like they're dominating in the ring. And unfortunately, even though he's not he's landing his strikes, he's still busy moving backwards, getting pressured. Guys, round number two in the can. Michael, where are you going with this one? Oh, that, that was a clear round for Ntombele. Uh, he, his, his power came through a lot. He, Michael Pizzano spent more time on the mat there than he did on his feet. So, look, I think that's a round apiece. Cardio is going to win this fight, guys. So whoever comes out, the fresher fighter, the one who's more aggressive, who can handle the pace for the three minutes, he's, he, that's the guy who's going to get his hand raised. Round number one, did you score that? A close round number one to Pizzano, or was it pretty obvious to you? Yeah, I think it was pretty obvious. I think um, Ntobella didn't get started. Um, he was on the back foot a lot. Uh, even though he took too many shots, he took too many right hands, a couple of low kicks. He, he definitely lost that first round, in my opinion. But we'll see what the judges say. Yeah, that's the reason why I asked, because, you know, in a fight that's potentially this close, to so say you got them one round each, how close was the first round? And is there potentially a judge who's actually seeing this two to nothing and it's in Tombella all the way? And I kind of think you're first. right. I think it was one, one each, definitely. And I think Ntombella is in the ascendancy, but it's going to come down to what Poseidon can bring out in this round. Look, if anyone gave the, yes, in my opinion, round. this is just my opinion, if any judge gave that first round to Ntombella, they shouldn't be judging. There you have it. King of the Peanuts, Michael Menemone. Shakes the nuts, and here we go, round number three. Poseidon starting off with leg attack from the right-hand side. 
I think looking at round one as well, that's something that worked well for him. You know, as he was coming in, he needs to hit that leg, just keep peppering, keep peppering. It's frustrating as well for fighter. As you're stepping in, you're getting those shots, and they sting. They do hurt. Don't ever think like he's not. He's feeling those. Besed note looking for a downward elbow onto Ndombele, who wasn't home. Ndombele doesn't look comfortable. He looks like he's trying to get him out of there. He's forcing his punches. He's not. He's not being smooth. Uh, he's being too erratic. He's trying to finish this fight. He's like he's looking for the knockout. He's rushing a little bit, but that was a nice sweep. Yeah, again, so the one defense that uh, Tombella does have against those leg kicks is that he's able to catch them, which is unusual. You don't often catch leg kicks, but I guess his arms are long enough and he's getting down. He's anticipating them as well. You know, that's the thing. Even before this fight got signed, you know, when it did get signed, I'm pretty sure the Poseidon would have been honest and said, yeah, I probably am the underdog. I'm not expected to win this, but he's fronted up. He's shown a lot of improvement, and I'm very impressed with him, even though I kind of have him on the downside at the moment, midway through round number three. Yeah, yeah, I think one thing we haven't seen as well is like that clinch game. He did pretty well last time. Even though like Shane was more dominant, he was the one engaging in the clinch. We haven't seen that now. And maybe that's just a case of being pressured backwards and he's playing off his back foot. And of course, this is the second Viper MMA fighter that we've had on the card. Mr. Boris was earlier on showing us an absolute peach of a performance in the way that he took care of business. And here we have his teammate, I'm sure sparring partner, Besedno, trying his hardest to weather the storm from Ntombella. Yeah, these guys come to fight. Very impressed with Viper MMA. All their members can be very impressed too. Round number three. Oh, that was a huge right hand. Big right hand, staggers. He's on, he's on chicken legs, yeah. Yes. I don't know how long this is going to last. Looking for that clinch. Anything if he lands right another now. one, it might, I might be right. Surprise, Good. maybe a standing eight counter. Nope. I know it's not on your screen, but I can He's see from here. He barely can stand. 43 seconds oh! is left in round number three. I don't know if he's going to make it out of this round. He needs to clinch. He needs to hold on tight. You can't let a big guy like this nice just tee kick. off on you. I'd throw a nice head kick right now. Michael, he's tough as nails. He's showing so much heart. So much. He's still in there and he's swinging. He's going for it. Never say die attitude. Michael Besaid note in the throes of it all right now. And Tombella looks like he's gassing himself out, trying to put him away. But importantly, landing those strikes. So, I mean, he's definitely putting all that pressure on. But it's a great fight to watch. Both guys not backing down anymore. Besaid note still coming forward. I'm very impressed. Besaid note ends the fight on his feet, moving forward, probably lost. But what a performance from Michael Besaidno. Good performance from Sibonello and Tabella. I'm thinking that he probably expected it to be a lot easier, though. I think that's exactly what happened. I think he came forward expecting to land a big strike early, put him away, and uh, got caught unawares. Yeah, he wasn't as clinical as he was in his last performance, and I think it's a step up over the opponent. And also, like I said, that experience fighting somebody as technical as Shane definitely paid off for Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, that bout goes a distance of three rounds. Your winner coming by way of unanimous decision victory. Fighting out of Volundi in KwaZulu Natal, Simonello in Tompela. <laughs>